We still have no idea what yeah. happened. Oh my gosh. No need to look. Hey, here. we didn't do this. Dude. What's the time? What's up, everybody? Today on Cars and Cameras, we're working on a vintage Sears Roper. We literally just made it home from the 2022 Pate Swap Meet with Go Power Sports, and it was an incredible show. I bought some new wheels and tires for my Fox Mini Bike. I found a vintage sidecar we're going to turn into an open wheel off road racer. Uh, Charles bought and sold all kinds of wagons. I had no idea he was a wagon guy. Uh, Ike bought some ST90 parts, but probably our most important and exciting find of the swap meet was this 1970s Sears Roper that Charles picked up. To start things off, the reason why I kind of have a soft spot because my very first mini bike happens to be the base, the basically the base model of a Sears Roper, 1972, and this is the deluxe. Front forks, sissy bar, let's see, disc brakes, jack shaft, uh, and it's got the gas tank. I mean, I once I saw it, I had to have it. So you're telling me that's the Bel Air? Basically. That's the two-door convertible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And uh, let's see. You know, it's it's missing a few things. Of course, you know, it's got the wrong front wheel. Someone added the front fender a little bit, but we've got some things to, you know, to restore over, you know, over some time. And they sadly, they painted over the original orange, but I think we can bring this rattle, I think we can take this rattle can off. if. We've, we've painted it on. I think we could take it off. I think so. But now, now show them. Okay. So, <laughs> and, you know, and let, look, this is, learn from my mistake. I, who thought, who would have thought you needed to look over the mini bike? Okay. I looked over the mini bike, but not. You didn't under look the under the mini, the mini bike. bike. Who's the, okay. And look, if you can figure it out, leave a comment below. Cause we're still, we still have no idea what happened. Somebody, I, I think somebody put the moon tune in the last engine <laughs> and just the rod said, I'm going to pack my bag and fly south for the winter. Because it really did. Well, the, the thing is, man, there's no way that was a, a, a piston or a rod no. because, like, that's the thickest part of the yes. engine case and it has to go through steel. So. Yeah, there's no way the rotating assembly from the original engine did that. I think it's more likely that someone took the engine off and it looked at them funny and they blew a hole in the I bottom mean, of it. it. They were, it was from Texas, I mean. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it adds character. I was thinking about, you know, just doing some body work and patching it, but if we can get all four bolts in that engine, I mean, we've done worse with three, so. I say we leave it. I, I, it adds character, I like it. So you've seen the bike, you've seen the hole blown in the bottom of it. Let us know in the comments what you think happened there. Uh, but basically in today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we're gonna get this thing running and riding again with some help from gopowersports.com. Send it around the Cars and Cameras Grand Prix. So first things first, we're gonna check for oil and ignition. It's pretty sweaty. I'd say there's some in there. Oh yeah, it's wet in there. It it looks like what is it? You know how it's like Craigslist. I change my oil every three thousands dark. Uh -huh. That's 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 what it looks like. <laughs> so it's enough to see if it's gonna have ignition. Oh absolutely. All right. So as as you know as we can tell, this is not. I don't think this is the original engine. It's the original style, but the original one wouldn't have had a gas tank because. There's a gas tank here. So maybe the original one did kind of blow up. But anyway, I think we're going to see if this thing has spark. I'm guessing it's a five horse because it's an HS50. Oh, yeah. But I don't I don't know anything about uh, Tecumseh engines. Let's see. All right, you ready? Uh-oh. It's got some power. I saw a little something. Yeah, I'm, I might, you know what, I'm gonna pull the spark plug out so I have an easier time pulling it over. We're I'll... gonna remove the spark plug to check for spark here. Turn over a little easier. Oh, it actually doesn't look too oil fouled. That's good. Yep. Yay! We, got we have spark. ignition. Sweet! That means the, the North Carolina humidity hasn't ruined the points just yet. Not yet. <laughs> so Charles had a great idea. We're gonna pop that air cleaner off before we try to run it okay wow that looks great 
Nice. Because sometimes there could be a bird nest or a wasp nest in there. You just you just don't know. Oh, perfect. That looks fantastic. Got another hundred thousand on it. <laughs> Uh, and another thing that's really interesting about this bike that you don't see every day is it looks like that muffler was actually brazed on there with brass. So yeah. That's an old school modification, man. That that was, <laughs> I bet you that was done with a torch and, well, yeah, of course, it was done with a torch and a brass rod, but, you know, like the, the old mechanic that I, I learned how to weld with, he would weld with a, a, what is it, a torch and a coat hanger and just those, just those glasses. No wonder he was blind. Before we left Texas to come home for North Carolina, Go Power Sports sent us with all the parts we're gonna need to rehabilitate this old Sears. I'm talking a complete fueling system, a new carburetor, their brand new Tillotson four-stroke engine oil, uh, three different tire options, uh, tubes, a new carburetor, and belt. So if you have an old Sears Roper or any old vintage mini bike or go-kart, go, go Power Sports can hook you up with the parts you need at a great price. So you can check out the links to these parts we're using in the description of today's video. And of course, anytime you place an order with Go Power Sports on the order page where you're entering your shipping information, let them know that Cars and Camera sent you in the drop down menu. Got some really awesome, let's see, is it 3 16 fuel line from Go Power Sports? Yeah, y'all are lucky you don't have smell of vision because oh what gosh. came out of that tank was so disgusting. Bad. Like, imagine maple syrup except mixed with dead dinosaurs. Um, we removed the fuel tank because what's in there is so disgusting. And so we're just going to do a little, little rinse out, shake it up a little bit. Oh my goodness, it was And dispose so of it, but it's really nasty. Yeah, I got it on me. I'm probably going to be smelling like that for a while. Now that we've disposed of all that nasty gas in the fun bucket, it, let me tell you, it looked like yellow Gatorade coming out. One of the main reasons why I got this bike was because it was so complete. And my new goal is to get all the 70s Sears bikes. And maybe I can do it at Pate because that seems like the best place. So how many how many do you have to collect then? Uh, man, I, I'm going to have to ask Rick. He's he's the guy. Like 10, 5? I think, I think somewhere around... 10 or 15 maybe that I think that was how many came out in in the 70s I could be wrong though I have three so far again we're just gonna see what happens with that factory carburetor because why not it might be good we've, we've had some luck in the past so we got our Sunoco 95 octane ethanol free interesting nothing's come through the line yet I wonder if uh, I need to crack the yeah we probably need to there oh. it goes. Okay. Right. Yeah, that should be plenty, man. There's the fuel on going through our nice filter. We're gonna see Let's what happens. See if it starts to see if it starts to leak. Well, oh, looks like it filled up. Maybe give the carburetor a tap. All right. Let yeah, it you gotta give you gotta give it a tap for good luck. All right, so we'll choke it. So we could have like a, a stuck float. Is that is that correct? Possibly, because okay. you know my guess is I would have expected it either to leak out the the carburetor bowl because I can see the gasket; it's pretty dry rotted. So I'm thinking it's stuck, but without without pulling it down, let's just see if we can get it to light off with yeah. the uh, hot sauce. Ooh. Oh yeah. It's a lot. It's pretty spicy. All right. Oh. Oh. Ooh, it sounds good. Let's see. Dude, it's right. purring. That was with the choke on. Whoa. Hold on. Now. It sounds good.
<laughs> oh, it smells like old oh, gas. Oh gosh. Whew. Okay. Well, it sounds fantastic, dude. What do you know? It, and it didn't smoke at all. No. It was definitely running on gas, not just starting fluid. Yep. Dude, you want dude. to change the oil and? I think so. Yeah. Hey. Put it there. Good job. Whenever we're working on an old engine that we don't know anything about, we always like to try to get it running like we just did before we do any maintenance items like change the oil. You, you want to check and make sure that it has oil in it, but why put brand new oil in an engine that might be such a bad smoker or be stuck or have rod knock? So, But we've confirmed that thankfully this old Tecumseh HS50 5 horse runs and it doesn't even smoke. So uh, it's given us the thumbs up that it's ready for an oil change and some other maintenance items. So Charles is going to be changing the engine oil and I'm going to be switching out this tired, disgusting old belt for a new one from Go Power Sports. Now, this, this belt may have to go like on the wall of Cars and Cameras history because this is like, this is the 20 series torque converter. If it weren't for this, you know, we wouldn't have the 30 series, <laughs> technically. It's the granddaddy Yeah, of this is all. the granddad. Oh no, we got a leak. Oh, oh no. What's interesting about this, I was sitting here working on taking that, uh, the drive assembly apart, and I, w I noticed it had rear suspension, but there's no swing arm pivot right here. So I was like, Charles, how does this work? Yeah, the, the motor plate and the swing arm are one, and they pivot inside of the rest of the triangle frame. Uh, so the pivot is right there. Which yeah. means the whole engine and everything back here pivots. Yeah, it's I so mean, funky. it's it's kind of it's give and take. Uh, you don't get any chain slack slack with the suspension compressing, but also the engine shakes around a bit more. So, and you know, with Tecumsehs, their carburetors don't like that. Yeah. So that might be something that bites us in the butt. But we have a way to improve that. So no worries. So it's just cool to see, like back yeah. in the '70s, all the different designs that people tried. Yeah, I mean, because you get this kind of you get this kind of suspension, and then like if we go and look at your Fox, that's more of a I guess the improved rear swing arm, and I mean I guess that's where kind of where either they got the idea from dirt bikes or they got it from us. I think they got it from yeah. us. So I got here at midnight last night, and yeah. he didn't have a key to my house, so he slept in his truck. Oh, I'm feeling good. So you are a freaking trooper for coming to work today. It's really sweaty. And Sorry. at one point. They somehow swapped hats in Texas, so Ike has been wearing Charles's hat for like four days and vice versa. So <laughs> I don't sweat like he does, though. <laughs> yeah, we we were I'm me and you were sweaty. That hat. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it was too far. It had been too long for us to worry about it. So, <laughs> but check out the design of the swing arm. It's very funky. Yeah, the uh, the whole engine cradle is the uh, swing arm, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. And in order to get one of those bolts out to swap over the belt, you have to basically remove the swing arm pivot and, and move the front end. What? I don't know who designed it, man. It's because the bolts were put in like long so, ways this way, so they backed into this. So is that one like that too? It's the same suspension, but it doesn't have a jack shaft. This one's got jack shaft mounts, mine does not. Mine's got a scrub brake and just well, a straight drive, just a straight this chain This one's supposed drive. to have a scrub brake. Wow, this thing is tired, but it did not want to give up. Yeah, that belt is so cracked, dude. Show him. Oh my gosh. It's, yeah, look on the inside. So bad. So we got the brand new belt going on right now. And uh, it's got a really cool little sticker on it. This side, the engine, so you know which side goes to the engine and which side faces out. A little tricky, ain't it, bud? Yeah. But we're getting there. Oh, I got it. There we go. It's cool. I just noticed that the driver and the driven are both Comet. Genuine. This, this even says Comet on there. So we got the belt on, and next thing we're going to do is replace this rear tire because it's off the bead and it's got some dry rot to it. So, Charles, what do we got over there, buddy? Looks like we got a brand new tire. 410, okay. 350 by 6. Nice. And, and a tube to go with it. All right, the front tire looks pretty good, but we, yeah. we might want to do some of the spacing stuff. I, I think they've been watching our channel. <laughs> they Why used you say a, that? They used a bearing for a spacer. 
Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. You know, Bluetooth. Did, did y'all notice that that's a split rim on the front? Yeah. That's the one in the pile. I've never seen one like that. Yeah. So, all right. Let's get this rear tire off and get her back together. So this bike has the optional upgrade uh, disc brake, whereas Charles also has the base model that has a uh, scrubber. So it's kind of cool to see. Nice. Here we go. Oh, man. So uh, we got to remove the disc to get the tire off because the sprocket is part of the rim. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's just like the other one. Yeah. So, um. I like how there's holes in that one to get to your valve stem. Mine doesn't have that. Oh, there. my goodness. No, no, no need to look. Hey, here. we didn't do this. They, they replaced that bearing. Look, it was the wrong size shaft, so they shoved a pipe in oh, there. Nice. <laughs> hey, but that's, look, that's nice. the torque side, you know. So now that we got the old tire off, time to put the new one on. And, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do it the old school way, I guess, or just, you know, the hard way without a machine. But, and of course, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. So if you see me doing something wrong, let me know. Finally, I finally got it to start. And it's just there's, one side at a time. There's one, there's the first bead. Now, what I might go ahead and do is go ahead and uh, wiggle the tube in here since, well, actually, hold, yeah, I'm gonna do it on this side. This is the way to do it. Some people use lubricant, some people don't. Yeah, personally, I don't, I don't like to use anything because when I do finally get the tire and rim to bite, I don't want the lube to work against me and it slip back off when I, when I go to grab another tool or something. So that's just, that's just how I do it. There it is. All right. Yep, and the valve stem still is there. Let's air it up, bud. Yeah. Wasn't too bad. No. Patience is the most important thing yeah. with tires. Yeah, and a good knee pad. We got this four stroke oil here. Designed specifically for I small mean, engines. This is plus two horsepower, <laughs> guaranteed. So you're doubling the output, is that what you're telling me? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Charles did give me a funnel because uh, I put some fresh oil on his uh, old oil. Yeah, I know, it. man, you can't be messing with that. The old oil's there keep the frame from rusting. I got, we gotta clean this thing up. She's, it's not the newer. Bad shape. Oh, really? That ought to work. My first bike, when I had, when I got it, these original shocks, and I can tell they're original because they, they say made in Italy at the top, just like those. I had to flip the bike upside down and fill them up, but uh, they freed up, so I'm pretty sure if these are stuck, we can, we can get them going. Nice. All right. Look at that, boys. Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, oh. Gotta watch them fingers. You're good. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> well, the old Roper is almost ready for its maiden voyage at the Cars and Cameras Motorplex. The guys are just getting the rear axle tight, and uh, we're going to see if we can figure out the idling issue that we seem to be having. Uh, but I do have a little bit of news to share with everybody. You might have seen all the wood we have laying around. We're getting ready to start phase two of the new shop build out, which we're gonna be filming. It's gonna be really, really cool. We're gonna build a second floor, basically right here with an office up there. So that way when my M3 or the truck is parked up on top there, we can see it from our new lounge area, podcast area and office area as well. So we're gonna get started on that very soon. So be sure to subscribe because plan on making a video of it and start using this space much more efficiently. And finally, if you've seen how our beautiful Ben Pack lift is situated in here, you might be wondering, how do you get a car out of there? Well, uh, I've been waiting for eight weeks now on getting a garage door installed right there. So all that fun stuff is happening very, very soon. And then we're going to get back to our kind of custom big builds, which it's been a while since we've had one. I think the yard dart was the last big custom build we've had. And uh, we picked up some new parts at Pate. Uh, that we're going to be using as part of a new big build and i can't wait to get started we got this little warning thing that's it oh, i want you, i can't read upside down what is it this mini bike may be operated on private property or pursuant to local law so the bike is pretty much ready for a road test 
Uh, but first, we're trying to remove that old green paint uh, to get it to that original orange. So we just have a rag and some gasoline, and it's doing an okay job. I mean, that looks fantastic down there, but we may need something a little more abrasive. So we seem to have found the right combination. A little bit of brake clean for a pre-soak. A little bit on a rag and wipe. Look at that decal. Oh, 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 that looks brand spanking decal. new. Oh my goodness. Dude, I think this is just gonna, I think this might be called Tina. Still pretty grimy over here with green. Let me come over here. Yeah, check out these handlebars. Oh, man. Oh, they're coming back. Yeah, I mean, this is just a uh, really fine. So let's see, here's the before. And now after. And all you need is some fine steel wool. And you just give it a rub. And uh, with a little bit of, uh, what is it, PV or WD-40 as a lubricant? Mm -hmm. So yep. it slides a little easier? And some elbow grease. Oh, yeah. Yeah, scratch the WD-40. It's just elbow grease. That's it. And you, you got to find the combination of chemicals and and uh scrubbing that's going to work for you because a brake clean and a rag might work on this bike but it might destroy the original paint on your bike you just don't know uh if you leave it too long on this bike it actually does pull up the orange so so you want to be quick and if it does start what we figured out is if it does yeah, start it, to lift the orange leave just it let it off gas and it'll set back down so Today is finally the day we're getting a garage door installed right over there. So if you hear some noise, that's what it's it is. Daylight. I see daylight. My new building. There's literally going to be an, an 8 by 10 hole. An 8 by 10 hole in your new building, but then it's going to get filled right back in. You know, for a couple of hours of work, this thing turned out fantastic. Now, the boys told me that the engine is not idling. So, uh... I think it's time for us to crank it up and see if we still have an idle issue. Oh, goodness. Oops. Hey, bring it to level two. Oh, you're gonna take that from him? It's okay. On the first one. The brakes are. Hey, no smoke. It runs great. Oh, and the kill switch works. Kill switch works. Perfect. I thought I'd turn it off before we gassed everybody up. Yeah. Uh, it seems to idle great. I don't know what y'all's problems were. Maybe wait, we just... wait, wait, wait. Magic touch. That's... All right, boys, let's run the bike, see let's what it puts do it. down. So here's the current Cars and Cameras Grand Prix leaderboard standing. Yard Dart with a 5239. Down to the Rocon with a 111. And then, well, we have the leaderboard, and then we have the, the loser board back here. I have a feeling that uh, this vintage mini bike. It's gonna be on this side. If there's anybody that can make five horsepower look like a lot, it's our boy Charles. Yeah. I heard a little backfire. I would like to make a wager. Uh-oh. I bet the Rat Rod Wagon can beat that. I think so. The Grand Prix. I think it can. You want to find out? We can find out. 
I think we should, yeah, we should. Although, wait, 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 wait. So you think the rat rod wagon can beat that? I don't know, yeah, probably. Then there ain't no point in running it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's gonna beat it. That thing's slow. Yeah. But it's a good cruiser. Oh, it's it's. Sweet. I was able to handle it pretty good. Turn. I don't know, but I think we might have to put the rat rod wagon on. Uh, I think, I we, think should. we should. I mean, it was Prix. it's the two paint swap meet flatheads. Yeah. We brought this one and then added another one to our collection. I guess the garage door guy's going on hot lap. Oh, he's backing up to the back of the back side of the building. I hope. Cool. Well, hey man, let's get you a, a test lap. Yeah. And then we'll send you uh, around the Grand Prix. Okay. See what it puts down. Yeah, I'll a put whopping two minutes. No, it's going to be under two, boys. 50. Right. So, because we have so much going on with the new garage door and building out the second floor, we're not going to set up the lasers today. But on a vehicle that's going to run a two minute lap time anyway, those extra couple of tenths aren't going to matter. is realistically I'm gonna say a minute 30. I gotta say Charles looks pretty good on that roper. Does he? I mean it's not his first rope roper rodeo. Rope, ropeo? Ropeo that's <laughs> it. I picked up like four miles an hour down that hill. Whee! All right I smoothed this out for us. Oh yeah way better way better. Oh boy river crossing curving. And keep going man you look like you know what you're doing on all there right. man so i didn't hit the brake at all um i didn't i didn't tell you but you know the oh did it not work not he's messing with you <laughs> oh well i mean it... i'm not telling you to your time sir yeah, that's fine it was respectable for this old gal it was respectable i'm surprised dude it's like running at 3600 rpm the whole way nice you can't complain other than just like you want it to go, go faster, somewhere. but I mean, it's just, it's, it's a paint swap meet cruiser. She's a sweet bike, man. Ooh. All right, Ike, you're up. All right. competitive guy you can yeah. see he was pushing off at the start line That's and stuff okay. you know all it takes is what is it one one hundredth of a second to beat each other that's right so doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile winning's winning boy if you make a wrong move this thing slows down fast Scare the, you had to scare the gremlin out of it. Yeah, so I felt better about that. I, my 
turns were a lot better. The thing was, I was cutting a turn so sharp, I was losing my momentum. Oh, and okay. And the thing just took forever All to right. get going. So this is one of those bikes, low on power, you just try to keep as straight as possible, smooth turns, and you get a better time. Yep. Cool. Well, let's check out the leaderboard. All right. Cool. All right, guys. Here's the Cars and Cameras leaderboard. Here is the Cars and Cameras loser board. That's where I stay. So my first question to you guys, do you think either one of you made it on the leaderboard? No. No. You would be correct. That's fine. <laughs> so that means you're slower than a 111. Yeah. So the faster, the fastest time between the two of you was a 1, 19, oh. 13, and that was Ike. What? Yep. I was faster than Charles? See, Ike, we have our own personal leaderboard back here without John. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, that's wild, man. It's a great riding mini bike. Well, I wouldn't know. I haven't ridden it yet. But it, it looks fantastic. It doesn't look slow. But it's still five seconds slower than the three of us oh, on the loaded on the limo, limo car. Cart. So on that bombshell, it is time to end today's episode. Thank you all for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you're enjoying the mini bike content. And of course, anytime you need parts for your old mini bike go kart, hit up gopowersports.com and let them know that the guys at Cars and Cameras sent you at checkout. Got any final thoughts? I just got to say thank you for inviting me to paint swap meet because I wouldn't have that bike without it. And I, I yeah, I just. I'm speechless. We had a fantastic time. Go Power Sports. They are like the best hosts ever down there. So come on out to Paint Swap Meet 2023. I think the paint turned out fantastic. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah. Um, that, that was the biggest That was the biggest surprise. I mean, because yeah. it turned it into like an old green turd into the, into the orange, orange peel. It turned into the orange peel. So thank you all for watching, and we will catch you in the next episode. So are you wanting to try again? I got to ride it twice. No, nah, it's okay. Yeah, you did get to ride it yeah. twice. No, li the li I, is going to be loaded with that. Me, me, I mean, me personally, the only thing I saw myself not doing was the, sh the shove at the start. Here's the million dollar question. What did he run his first hot lap? 121. I would say he's still a little bit faster. Yeah. Darn. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's okay. I mean, I was, I, was, I, was I was just enjoying the bike. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, and... You guys ready to uh, run a mini bike? Absolutely. Looks fantastic. Guys, I just want to say I am, I am so glad we have this beautiful shop that is completely sealed and airtight to the rest of the world. And I put in that air conditioning too, just... It's kind of nice. Yeah. We're some I'm, lucky guys. Yeah. There's a, some, it feels like somebody left a window open. <laughs>